But I mean, so if they, you look like it, like all of almost any foundational critical race theory thing, they say things like, you know, oh, critical race theory questions the very foundations of liberal order, including equality theory, legal right. reasoning, enlightenment, rationalism, neutral principles of constitutional I'm law. I'm literally reading this right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reading this right you now. Yeah. Right. And even, I mean, even says this on the Wikipedia for critical race but theory. But that's the number one it, thing. Right? Like well, everything you, you understand should be qu questioned. Like, well, well being wait a minute. rational human being is, is yes, questioning how but liberalism works, I'm how sure it might you've... set up certain systems. Like, I think that asking questions, there's, I thought that that's what Adam was well, just doing. Okay, here but wait a minute. We're not, we're, yes, but we're not, you know, the Cartman, I'm just asking questions. Like, I'm sure you've read a lot of these academic papers, you know, people rarely say something like, fuck X. What they do is they say, oh, well, I critique X, I question X. And then they give you a long list of things that they have a problem with X. Okay, and it's the same thing with critical race theory. All the tenets that they espouse are all against the tenets of liberalism and individualism. I don't know if that's entirely true against, I mean, uh, it might Kimberly, be against individualism. It does seem to be pretty collective. Um, but well, hold I mean, on, that's I can, a huge tenet of liberalism. Well, I can, hold on, let me pull this up here because um, I know that uh, they're, the tenets of critical race theory I have a wiki page here. I would suggest you guys check this one out. This is a really, I'm going to put it on my screen here. This is a really great page. It, it's like a encyclopedia, basically just explaining it. There's not any bias in there. Um, and they go through the tenets of it. Um, and honestly, like this is, this is actually a good combo because I want to make it like explicitly clear both to you and the people listening that I am in no way here to try and just like straight up defend critical race theory. I mm -hmm. think that there are problems with it. And I think that it should be critiqued. Um, one of the six tenets, the voice of color, holding the feet that people of color are uniquely qualified to speak on behalf of other members of their group that I find to be like a little bit like, eh, I'm not crazy. Sure. Like, Insane. yeah, I kind of wish that we yes. could have gotten into that on the panel. Right. Because that would have been one where I would have said, I'm not too sure about this one specifically, but my main issue with the, the critical race theory discussion in general, right. Is I feel like we sometimes fall into a fallacy of origin. So like, critical race theory some of the scholar or some of the founders of it probably did have like some shitty ass ideas some of the founders maybe they did have some bad ideas about like getting rid of liberalism or that white people are all bad or whatever but like that's one thing but then it's also about how is critical race theory applied and what does it look like today what is it actually like how is it manifesting itself right um and i think when we get too down in the the weeds about like well this founder said this or this like opening beginning text said this is like I think that you do kind of fall in there to a little bit of a fallacy of origin, because I think if you want to look at how critical race theory is taught today, it's more like, like it's not even taught really through to K through 12. Yeah, like that's, it's not really, at least not supposed to. Well, no, and then okay. But that's a different. Are also, usually it's like, it helps teachers kind of like understand like maybe how to handle, like if they have like a more diverse classroom or it's like, there's sometimes like critical race theory, like undertones in certain teaching or whatever. The way that I see critical race theory, though, at least today, is just looking critically at how, you know, our culture, society, and history intersect to create certain racial outcomes. And I think a good example of that would be the criminal justice system. I think that there's a, a lot of data there that, that supports that point. And I think that critical race theory has helped a lot in honing down on that specific issue. Do you think that in the classroom, white students and black students should have different cultural criterias? Or do you think uh, everyone should have the same criteria? Are you talking about that one where it said that black kids shouldn't give their work or something? Uh, no, I'm just talking about there's an idea, an anti-assimilationist idea in critical race theory that black people should have a distinctive cultural normative uh, value system than white people. And that, I mean, that should be taught is that, to black Is that like kids. an original founding text? Because again, like, yeah, yeah, there, are pro there, there are probably some bad ideas within that academic field, but that's not a reason to get rid of the entire academic field, especially when it's yeah, but this, also okay, so, valuable but, insights. But, but you, understand that, <laughs> you understand that when I asked you, I said, you know, how is critical race theory not anti-liberalism? And then, you know, I can, I can provide you with examples and you're like, well, does that really mean that? I'm like, well, yeah, it does mean that if you read through all these foundational texts, which is what I've been mm -hmm. doing. I'm not reading the second hand. I'm reading, you know, the, so key, would... the key writings that form critical race theory. This is what this is all based off of. Right. And no, I'm, I'm not understand. sure. I, yeah, I think I'm not that... sure that you can sort of, when I see that even modern critical race theory uh, texts, they use the same terminology. They, they use the same language. They're all derived from the same core ideas. I, I mean, I don't, I'm just pulling this for as examples. I'm sure I could find a 2019 critical race theory paper that's espousing the same ideas. I just didn't think that that would be as 
as useful to the trying to describe what critical race theory is. Yeah, I mean, of, of course, there are going to be some people at the in the beginning of the field that have written bad things. But this is kind of what I'm getting at is like, we wouldn't necessarily throw out the whole academic field or the whole medical field of like psychology, right? Because Freud, for example, one of the like, beginners of in that kind of field, espoused ideas that like, all boys secretly want to like, fuck their mothers and like girls are attracted to their father based on the scent and like, they they had a lot of fucking wacky ass ideas, but that's still not necessarily that wouldn't necessarily get rid of the entire academic field. So just to be very clear, there are most likely I'm not familiar with all the foundational texts of CRT. I'm still very much learning about this, too. It seems to be it's very hard to even narrow it down, like what it actually is and what it looks like and everything else. I am sure there are founding texts and documents that have ideas that I would strongly disagree with. But you know what? There are founding texts and documents within psychology that I would strongly disagree with also. And it doesn't mean that we can't still learn something valuable from that field. So yeah, there might be some some bad things there, but I think that also in lending to that lens is helpful in helping us analyze things like our criminal justice system, right? Like sometimes you have to bring race into the equation to have full scope understanding as to why there are certain outcomes occurring. So I think with the Freud example, if you talk to most psychologists, they'll say, oh, you know, they're happy that Freud kind of conceptualized the idea of the unconscious mind and, you know, talk therapy and a lot of other things that he's sort of granted, even though they think that his specific theories, you know, they dismiss as not being true. And they're all based on his case studies and they weren't, you know, there wasn't science really there. Mm -hmm. And so Freud kind of created a foundation for other people to leap off of. And when you ask psychologists, they all say this for the most part. Mm -hmm. If you talk to people that are critical race scholars today, they do not denounce uh, Derek Bell and Kimberly Crenshaw and Delgado. I mean, Kimberly Crenshaw was just like on CNN a couple of weeks ago being interviewed about this. So that's why I, mean, I there don't... might not be some, there might be some, but like that doesn't, I'm just really... saying, I don't think that you should, I like, don't... if you want to just say like, Oh, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't have a strong opinion about this. I don't know. I need to do my own research. I, I just wouldn't marry yourself to this idea that like, oh, you know. Oh, I'm not married to this idea at all. Okay, I just, I'm, I'm just saying I'm, you don't want to have like this position that current critical race theory, I mean, the, the core tenet of critical race theory that still exists today, this is the core tenet, is that the legal system is intrinsically tied into maintaining oppressive white uh, racial domination. And that breeds into everything else about the anti-liberalism. So I'm not sure you can disconnect all these things. I mean, you can though because for example like when you're talking about the criminal justice system we could say that some of that might be like a little out there sounding but like is there some truth there is the criminal justice system disproportionately negatively affecting black people but yes that's, that's not their, their argument is one of intention it's not of outcome they're saying that the legal system was intended to be designed to maintain white power structure and Which is also kind of funny because that too, it would be arguably a fallacy of origin, right? Right, exactly. And they're saying that you can't reform it. And that's where the anti-liberalism comes from. Um, no, see, that's that's where I would disagree with you because based on what I'm reading here, this is where I will once again point to, it says, unlike most CL... Oh, hold on, let me show this on screen. Unlike most uh, critical legal scholars... Uh, critical race theorists did not wish to abandon the notions of law or legal rights altogether because in their experience, some laws and legal reforms had done much to help oppressed or exploited people. And when you talk about the criminal justice system, I'm seeing it um, kind of up here where it talks about, I can, let's see. They do talk about here, also they're like critiques of liberalism, sure. I just, I think that going as far as to be like, it wants to overthrow liberalism is a little silly. Usually they advocate for policies that, um, they're against like the idea of colorblindness, that the idea that like all that that um, certain outcomes are going to be identical for everyone where, without the the first factoring in race. I so guess they're not they're not against. And there's there's a long paper on this actually, and, and um, key writings that form critical race theory. They're not the the liberal argument in the '80s for affirmative action, which is very tied into critical race theory, mm -hmm. was that yes, affirmative action is technically an anti-liberal, anti-colorblind policy, but we still need to do it to make up for past transgressions. And the critical race theory people, they insult the liberals for making that argument. And they constantly chide the liberals for having 
an obsession of a goal of having of creating an end game colorblind society. And this I mean, is a what, constant reoccurring theme in critical race theory. What paper are you talking about here? This is this is in the key writings that formed uh, critical race theory book. This is Derek Bell's entire the the creator of critical race theory. His entire contention is that he doesn't think you can create a racially equal society in the first place. Is he one of the founders of critical race he theory? He is the founder of critical race theory. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Like I said, I'm not super intent and like held on to this idea. I can recognize right. that, again, some of the founders probably had some shitty ideas, but like how is critical race theory manifesting today, right? Like in the classroom, for example, it's not really even being taught, just so we're clear. Right, I so want people in my audience to know that like critical race theory, it's not like kids are being sat down for their critical race theory class. It's usually something that's talked about in colleges or found in like journals and papers and everything else. It can sometimes play a role in motivating uh, or I'm um, sorry, helping teachers in, uh, I guess, working with like a more diverse class or helping them understand uh, certain like lenses and ways to look through things, uh, mm -hmm. ways to explain history. Um, and I guess what, what I, the reason that I'm not too caught up in the, the whole foundation of uh, the, the founder of critical race theory is because I just kind of want to look at like, like pick it apart for what it is as an academic field and say like, is there anything valuable we can get from this? Is there anything bad out in this also? And I would say, yes, of course, there are bad critical race theorists and, and people that have really shitty ideas, even some of the founders. Yeah, if they're talking unironically about like segregating black and white people, then I would 100% say that's fucking horrible and I would denounce that immediately. But I also think that through this academic field, it can also provide a lens, even the way that like we talk about race. Like whenever we have a conversation about systemic racism, for example, we're more or less using a critical race theory lens to have that conversation, the way that we're analyzing that subject well, matter. I mean, the concept of systemic racism predates critical race theory. They're not, you know, critical race theory uses systemic racism. It didn't create the concept. So you can have all those it's conversations. True, but it also brought a lot. Well, but critical race theory also played a really big role in honing down on specifically the systemic issues within our criminal justice system. And critical race theory in that lens, at least, has definitely helped in uh, people having a better understanding of what systemic racism looks like and how it is still kind of in play right now. Well, I mean, since systemic racism is generally just viewed as you just look at an outcome of a situ of a system and say, okay, if this system creates a racially disparate outcome, then it's systemic racism. I don't, you don't need like a a specific lens to find that. It's pretty but apparent. But you might to be able to find because that on its own. like think about it. Like you might though, if if for example, if we didn't already know that, thanks to critical race theory helping us understand it better. But like if we didn't already know that, right? Like you'd have to start asking those questions and look through those lens. Is there a structure in place that is? delivering what like why is it delivering disproportionate outcomes here is it based on class mm, it doesn't seem like that because it seems like regardless of their financial situation there seems to be bias towards people yeah, but, who are black so like critical that race theory the doesn't critical provide theory. an answer to that they just come up with the presupposition in critical race theory is it's race it's not like they're detecting it's not like they're well, looking through the facts and saying this is race no they're saying this is race before well, they look that at argument the facts. I hear that argument a lot, but of course, like that's cr it's critical race theory. Of course. of course, it assumes there's going to be some racism there. That's the point of the academic well, field. Some, that's like saying we that's like saying we can't talk about math because it assumes there's going to be numbers there. Like that's a that's part of it. Well, no, but you looking you at race is part of it. You understand that, like you know, general basic psychology. You know, if you decide you're going to find something, you're going to find it, right? You understand, like everyone knows this. And so uh, if you say you're going to find sure. racism in a system, you're going to find it there. Um, I mean, maybe, perhaps, but I would be more interested in looking at like the systems that they've already analyzed and have found racism in, like, yeah, the criminal justice system. But they don't really, I mean, this is another problem in, too, is that they don't really believe, and I have direct quotes from this if you want, I can read them off to you. They don't really believe that you can find objective truth in a lot of these areas in the first place. So they're not what even- What do you mean objective truth? Are they like anti-realists? Cause that's like a common, like kind of moral position, uh, not moral position, but like ethical position, right? They, they don't think in the realms of these quote unquote social sciences that there is really such a thing as objectivity that can be found because their argument is that, oh, since they're coming at from this from the critical theory perspective, they're saying mm -hmm. everyone's production of knowledge in view of the world is rooted in this power struggle of oppression. 
And so they're saying there's no such real thing as objectivity. And this is just sort of like this trick that the, the cultural white hegemony like places on people. Well, so yeah, that sounds like kind of silly, really, but at the same time, I agree, that but sounds they like they can't really find the, the things that you're looking for. But that sounds like an extension of like, it does, it, you're right when I say there's no objective truth that can sound pretty like stupid and also kind of anti-intellectual. But when we're talking about that, that sounds like an extension of like moral realism or moral anti-realism, which basically believes that when you boil it down, all things are ultimately subjective or all things like, because that it's, I'm not saying I even agree with that. I'm just saying it sounds like an academic, like, Ex, uh, extension of that more or less well the, the, i don't think that's I understand as, what you're as saying. scary as it necessarily right. sounds on first well place. no it, it is because it would be like like if we were to go back to the the trans argument if adam said well i don't believe that you can find objective truth so i'm going to dismiss your statistics like that's sort of the way that this is being levied by critical mm-hmm. race theorists is that they're saying, well, the people collecting statistics are white and they have this white cultural hegemony and blah, 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 well, blah, Wouldn't blah, that blah, be blah. an argument against the critical, like some of the critical race theorists and not necessarily the entire academic field? Well, no, like well, the quote that I can read from that you, sounds which is dumb, from, by the way. It is, yeah, it is, it's really dumb. And from the critical race theory book that's always cited by Delgado is it says flat out, it says for the critical race theorist, objective truth like merit does not exist at least in social science and in politics. In these realms, truth is a social construct created to suit the purposes of the dominant group. And so I don't see how I mean, it's, sounds, this is- uh, Yeah, it sounds a little out there for sure. It, is it also sounds there. like like what I kind of said is an extension more or less of like moral realism or moral anti-realism. 